You can see out in this direction here is our World Heritage Area. So the thing to remember is that while it's in Australia, it's uh, largely irrelevant because it's protected internationally and it's important to people from all over the world. And that's because of its genetic diversity and its level of endemism. So a lot of what you see here occurs nowhere else. Not many people know this, but until about 20 million years ago, the whole of the Australian continent was pretty well mostly rainforest. This rainforest was about 2 million square kilometres larger than the Amazon. So over the years this giant forest has contracted and contracted to the point where all that remains, the largest rainforest on the planet is now between those hills right there and the ocean just out to our right. So what we're standing in is of immense global significance. Conditions here have remained really, really stable for about 150 million years. So because conditions have been stable for so long, the plants that live in this forest haven't had to change their characteristics. So it's really like walking backwards through time without exaggeration. In this forest we have 13 of the world's 15 genera of primitive plants. These are plants which everywhere else in the world they went extinct in the Jurassic and Cretaceous period, but right here they're still alive. So it's pretty crazy walking around. You see plants which they shouldn't even be here. It's like looking at fossils and our best, most prominent example of a living fossil is this big bloke here. Oh wow, well, is it alive? Yep, that's living. So that's a, a cowry pine, it's not a true pine, but um, it's very much a living fossil. Plants almost identical to this, right down to the grains of pollen, lived alongside the wall of dinosaurs. So it's quite amazing to see one alive today. All throughout the forest here, probably the most um, striking feature is the epiphytes. Epiphytes are, are plants which live on the surface of other plants. And you can see all through here, there's wader wall palms, there's uh, basket ferns and bird nest ferns, all living on the surface of trees. We get really high rainfall here. So in the wettest year we've had, in our three months of rain, we've had 11 and a half metres. So about 35 feet in three months. When it rains, it really takes off. We had about two feet of rain last week. So it's quite amazing. But these levels of rainfall, they can support life. So the water running off the trunk will be carrying uh, dissolved nutrients. Plants can harvest these almost hydroponically. That's how you get this wide range of diversity all through the trees. The cowry protects himself from heavy bites by constantly shedding his bark. So anything which grabs on really rapidly falls off. So it's a something that's worked out pretty well for them over the years. In my area, they get triggered to grow. So it's quite, quite a vicious sort of thing that's going on. This is the oldest rainforest on the planet, and because of its age, the interaction between plants here, they've been going back for a very long time, so each plant knows its neighbour very intimately, and it knows its weakness. So the roots of each plant here will secrete chemicals to directly inhibit its neighbouring plant, and it's species specific, so it's pretty cool. The same happens from the tips of the leaves, so you can't really see it because it's quite slow, but it's a real fight going on out here. In areas like this, you get a concentration of the really nasty plants too. Anyone here heard of stinging trees? They're a pretty common plant in Australia. They grow all down the uh, east coast. We get a giant stinging tree here. Now what's happened is uh, insects love to eat the stinging tree. So do little wallabies. So the stinging tree can either lay down and take it, or it can bite back, and that's what it does. So. Each leaf of the stinging tree is completely covered with these fine silicon rich hairs like little shards of glass. And each one is loaded with a really potent neurotoxin. So if you brush past this plant, you can get a very intense pain for up to two years. Something to avoid. <laughs> well, generally in a healthy intact forest, you don't get a lot of stinging trees. But if you start putting roads through, you start clearing land, stinging trees come up. So there's not a lot out here, there's one up at the station, there's a lot in Cairns, but we're pretty safe here. And um, we have hair removal wax, so if we get stung by the stinging tree, we paint on the wax and rip out the hairs as quick as possible and get beautiful smooth arms and legs too. So <laughs> I just say to people, oh yeah, you got stung again. Look how smooth they are though. <laughs> so what's happened is sap sucking insects, they love to drink the sap. The tar tree has made its sap a little bit caustic. So the next generation of insects has to have a greater tolerance for this caustic sap. The 
next generation of car tree has to have a more caustic sap to fight back the insect. So this has been going on for millions and millions of years and it's gotten to the point where if you touch this tar sap, you can get a second degree burn within a couple of moments. It's pretty intense. I've been burnt a couple of times and I had to go to hospital with a burn from a tree, which is pretty cool. <laughs>